and many of you through some of the city's most challenging times uh, would indeed um, visit us over there. Um, it was important uh, for me, and, it, and it's timely, um, particularly uh, seeing some of the reports uh, that came out from SLED this week to talk about crime across um, uh, our great state, to use this as an opportunity to really introduce some of you to the amazing work and leadership uh, that's been um, happening here uh, in the city of Columbia on the leadership of, of Chief Holbrook, uh, Deputy Chief Kelly, and this amazing command staff that we have behind us. Uh, the um, Stone City Manager Wilson uh, recently, I was invited, uh, many of you may remember, I did a, 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 uh, an interview hosted a forum uh, with the Washington Post uh, early this year with another mayor uh, who also had a law enforcement background uh, talking about the incredible uh, rise in violent crime we saw across America during the course of the pandemic. Uh, as we worked our way through uh, the, the panel, uh, it someone came up, how, well, why exactly are, are we here? Why was Columbia in, invited? And the quick response was uh, that, that uh, the host had engaged and the Washington Post had engaged with the uh, Police Executive Research Forum under the leadership of Chuck Wexler uh, and asked uh, which cities in the country saw an actual decrease in murders and violent crime over the course of 19 and 20, and Columbia was at the top of the list. It's so important uh, to take opportunities to push back against a, a, a narrative. We saw violent crime and murders go down over the course of the pandemic uh, in, in, our, in our city. And I will tell you, uh, it's because of the men and women behind me, their leadership, good old-fashioned policing combined with using technology as a force multiplier to try and, and, and dial in on the most challenging aspects of our um, community. This year, uh, gun murders are down in Columbia 31%. 31%, again, uh, pushing back against the odds. This wonderful police department continues to leverage modern day technology uh, combined with data-driven intelligence to reduce and prevent crime, and particularly our focus is on violent crime. Uh, in Colombia, So today we wanted to spend some time um, opening up the doors, uh, getting behind the curtains uh, for the people. The reality is that this place, this building, this technology, uh, all that we do here, this is the people's business. And it's important that uh, we open up to each and every one of you uh, the city's emergency operations center, which also hosts our real-time crime center. Uh, the, um, we moved in here in October of 20. 20, uh, 2020, uh, and again, uh, traditionally the EOC has been utilized as an, uh, uh, as an all hands on deck approach for full scale uh, emergency uh, operations in the city. Um, I'm sure uh, I know Chief uh, Director Tinsley gets uh, 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 his fill of us when we have floods and, and natural disasters and even sometimes uh, uh, protests. The goal, the next goal is to transform uh, the EOC into a full-time, 24-hour, real-time crime center. Um, Chief, I know we'll talk a, a lot about camera upgrades and all how we continue to consolidate resources into one prime location. Many of you know that the Metro Region's headquarters is, is, is upstairs here as, as well. Lots of amazing things um, happening in this space. Uh, I'm going to leave it to the professionals to um, to walk us through some of the details, and then we're going to be able to take some of your um, questions. And our goal is, um, and, it, and it's, I will say it's tough sometimes to push back against uh, the narratives. All you can do is, 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 uh, is, is present with facts. Um, the reality is that um, the facts show that not only are violent crimes down, but obviously uh, our, our gun homicides are down in this city, and it's not by accident. It's because of leadership. It's because of the fact that over the last several years we've increased the police department's budget uh, by, by 80%. We continue to invest in 21st century policing here in this city. In addition to the, to the, the cross and T's and dot and the V's and the hard work that these uh, men and women do, uh, they have committed themselves uh, to uh, a true commitment of, uh, of inclusion and, and building the strong ties that bind with neighborhoods and, and communities, uh, particularly those in which trust has not existed over, over the years. And, um, and I'm proud uh, of, of, of these men and women. I think we, we get so busy sometimes 
it was important to me uh, to uh, to come here and let them know how proud we are of the work that they do on behalf of, of each and every um, one of the people who live here in our great city. So I'm going to yield the microphone to uh, our chief, uh, Skip Holbrook, um, say some words, and, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll fill some questions uh, together. We really want to thank, I know of course Ms. Wilson's here with her amazing uh, team that, um, that helps us do the great work we do on behalf of the people of Columbia every single day. Chief? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so we are, we're very excited about um, this technology that, um, that Ms. Wilson and our council have invested in. Before I begin, I, I really have to acknowledge kind of how we got to where we are and, and really it started back in 2015 after the flood. Uh, Ms. Wilson uh, realized um, a need for an expanded role of emergency management. Um, she selected Harry Tinsley from the fire department to lead that endeavor and, and really this is um, his vision and where we stand today is, is at his hands and I think it's been instrumental as we've um, you know, moved through very critical events post 2015. Um, it um, is, you know, we've seen its weight in gold. Um, so, a few years ago, um, we also recognized the need within the police department to uh, invest and concentrate more on emergency management and preparation for critical incidents. We we hired Johnny Sellers. Um, he's an inspector. He um, in a previous life he was a provost marshal at, um, at Fort Jackson and he, he and Captain uh, Earl Marsh worked just hand in glove really to uh, raise the bar on our emergency preparedness and then as we arrive today um, Inspector Sellers is going to lead our efforts with our real-time crime center which again is really um, us being an extension of our frontline officers having our finger on the pulse of our technology and how that impacts day-to-day -day operations of course this emergency operations center is for um, crisis, um, natural disaster, um, serious incidents, and it's ready to spin up at any moment. But we know that you know we're not in that crisis emergency mode every single day, but we are in a um, police response operational mode every day, and um, that's what this this center represents. Um, I'd really like to just direct your attention to the to the board behind us. So what this represents is. Um, you know, we currently have 600 plus cameras in the city. We've invested about $8 million over the next five years. We're looking at about two, over $2 million this, this upcoming year as we um, take our camera uh, capabilities really to the next level. We're adding 200 cameras. Um, we're going to be transitioning away from some of the older technology. These 200 cameras will provide us greater real-time um, connectivity. So what you're seeing here is some examples of, um, of our cameras. We have facilities covered. We have key um, areas in the city. Uh, we're putting in layers of license plate readers and some of our um, choke points within the city. Of course, you have shot spotter technology. Um, our Alistar situational awareness platform. Um, that map of the city that you see right there, um, right now you're looking at several layers. You're looking at police, fire, um, some cameras, and Sheriff's Department, and this gives um, our leadership an operational picture of what's going on minute by minute. Um, the, you know, the mayor mentioned um, some of the crime statistics, and we um, we know we've got a violent crime problem, and we've we've had a violent crime problem for over a decade. Um, you know, we, um, we we are making progress. I think how we're leveraging technology is. Um, is what's allowing us to see some gains, but really holding, holding the line in a time where we're seeing unprecedented violence um, throughout the state and nationally. Um, we've seen, you know, a 50% increase in the last five years statewide, and um, you know we see articles after articles of um, cities, large and small, throughout the country that are experiencing unprecedented violent crime. So um, we do have a gun problem. Uh, we've never. Um, you know, tiptoed around that subject. Um, I'm encouraged by our gun murders being down, but I'm not encouraged by our non-fatal hits. They're up. And I want to show you a quick example of uh, what our technology brings us in terms of evidence recovery and, um, and review of an incident. You pull up on this uh, about a 30-second video. It's a good
good examples of some of the violence that we're dealing with on, a, on an everyday basis. As you can see, that's that's like something you see in a movie. Um, it's um, it's concerning just for for a variety of reasons. But um, you know, you saw innocent people standing by. You saw just complete disregard for um, the sanctity of life. You know, those rounds that didn't impact a person, um, they they landed somewhere. Property. Um, we have a lot of property damage, so we, we've got to keep our, our foot on the gas pedal when it comes to violent crime reduction. Um, our crime, uh, our shot spotter technology is, is at the forefront of that. We increased um, at an additional square mile last year. Um, this represents the last seven days. Um, you know, we've talked about this individually with many of you all, but um, this, is, um, this is directly connected to, our, to every officer. Um, they get it within 45 seconds of the gunfire and they respond immediately to it. Um, so, I'll give you an example of what it looks like when they get it. It, it pulls up, it gives them a, a picture of where it occurred, it gives them a radius so that they can strategize on what their approach to maybe intercept um, somebody that's responsible for the shooting, and then they can review the audio if they choose. shows the movement around we can if we can distinguish between one or multiple shooters um, and again it gives them situational awareness as a response but um, I, I would also contend that it makes them much safer they, they have a, a, a greater awareness when they arrive on the scenes um, again that's that's seven square miles we, we also are um, participating in a, in a project with shot spotter um, it's a predictive policing project and we identify our hot spots and, and create a box essentially and uh, and we put officers in those boxes for particular times and we're you know we're, we're in the process of monitoring the impact of that presence in that box where we know statistically it's very likely that a crime, crime will occur um, as i mentioned the lprs are licensed plate readers that again that'll be a force multiplier and um, it has a wide range of search capability and we'll be able to not only um, be able to see what um, vehicles may be wanted in other jurisdictions, but we'll also be able to put vehicles of interest that we can glean from our camera systems and from incidents like this um, into the system. And again, it, um, it ups the likelihood of us um, being able to intercept the perpetrator, and it also keeps our officers safer. We've seized, as a result of this technology and, um, and the work of our officers, we've seized um, over 700 guns so far this year. And again, we've got a few more months to go. So with all that said, we are extremely excited about um, this real-time crime center. We think it's going to um, be very impactful on our efforts to reduce violent crime. I cannot say enough about the, um, the investment that Ms. Wilson has put into the police department in these efforts and the support of the mayor um, leading the charge with council to make sure we have the, the best tools and the best technology that's available to help us do our job. Do you mind saying one thing about the uh, focus on repeat violent offenders and working with the federal government and state government on this? Uh, like well, um, the mayor asked me to speak about our, our efforts to reduce recidivism. Um, you know, we, uh, we often talk about we really have to focus on the, the uh, worst of the worst. We know 3 or 4% of the population is committing 80% of our, our serious crime. Uh, we also know that that a certain segment of the population that has served time that is re-entering, they're very vulnerable. Um, it's very likely statistically that they'll either be the victim of a crime or perpetrate a violent crime. So a couple of times a year we do our, our offender call-in where we um, identify those that are vulnerable to recidivism and we provide um, services that will help them be successful in their, in their re-entry. But they also hear a strong message from, from law enforcement that if they 
get out of line and they commit a crime, they're going to be the first in line and they're going to go back to prison for, for a long time. Um, our our uh, numbers have been uh, very, uh, uh, very good since we uh, started our, uh, our program four years ago. We have one that um, will we'll be standing up in, in December. So uh, we're, I mean, we're, we're very excited about that. And, and to complement that, um, a few months back, the council approved a special prosecutor's position, which is gonna be a special assistant United States attorney. And that position has been filled and that uh, special assistant U.S. attorney is, is now um, embedded in the U.S. Attorney's Office and the, um, his primary focus will be prosecuting violent offenders, violent federal offenders um, that commit crimes here in Columbia.